You guys. Uh, Rex. Why are we all here? I thought I was... I merely wished to examine the shapes of your hearts. That voice. Your... My name is Klaus. The architect of this world. I have watched over you all this time. I have seen your thoughts, your desires, the things you have achieved. So you did that just now? Yes. Those were not your present forms, but alternate possibilities. Your other selves that lie within. That is what I wanted to see. Our other selves? You mean we're all thinking stuff like that, deep down? Was that how we really feel? Then you saw it too? Looks like we were all shown the same kind of stuff. It creeped me out. What are you trying to prove? Those were the fears you harbor. I don't get it at all. What was your purpose in showing us this? Those were not pleasant visions to behold. My only purpose was to find out how mankind has changed and where it is headed. And were you disappointed? No. As you stand before me right now, that is who you are. That is enough. Architect, sir. I came here because I met Pyra. Is this really Elysium? Are you really? I will show you everything. Memories. Mine. And those of this planet. This world was once the stage of a struggle for survival that dwarfed this current predicament. The world was an unseemly place, though glimpses of beauty persisted. What should people live for? Who should they live for? They live for themselves. To harbor desires and struggle to realize them. That is the natural state of man. But I did not think that was good enough. I lost hope for mankind. I searched tirelessly for an outside solution. And one day I found it. The conduit. Why it chose to appear before us, I do not know. However, its existence presented a new possibility. Possibility? Our world was not the only one. Endless universes coexist, side by side, yet all completely unaware of one another. The conduit was our link to these foreign worlds. And I opened that forbidden gateway, praying that it would change the world. You have seen the plane called Moritha, have you not? That is what remains of my world. When I opened the conduit, many people and many things disappeared into distant dimensions. 
All that remained here were the ruins of Moritha. And half of my body. Your body? Half of me lives on in some other dimension. But not for much longer. What do you mean? The moment of my other self's demise draws near. Father, you... I was a fool. Because of my foolishness, I lost everything. Left here, alone and broken, I longed for oblivion, but even that eluded me. This is my punishment. Retribution from on high for the sin I have committed. On high? There was only one thing I could do. I had to atone for my sin. I swore to restore this world. The first thing I created was a special particulate substance with the ability to restore deteriorated matter. You all know it as the Cloud Sea. The Cloud Sea can disassemble matter it comes in contact with and rebuild it in the image of all the things that once made up this world. This way, little by little, I could rebuild the world I had brought to ruin. Next, I began to recreate life. I gathered miniature vessels containing memories of all this planet's former life forms. And I scattered them across the Cloud Sea. These are the core crystals. The crystals bonded with the Cloud Sea's particulate reconstructors and formed the nuclei of new life. Those nuclei developed into minute life forms, the Titans, who would, over time, grow larger and larger. Finally, the Titans gave birth to complex organisms based on the data in their core crystals. This newly birthed life over untold millennia, evolved into a new breed of mankind. So that's how we came to live in this world. But I did not trust this world, born as it had been. What if it were to repeat our mistakes? What if someone like me appeared? To stave off these doubts, I implemented one final measure. And so the blades were born. <sighs> Ontos, Logos, and Numa. The three cores of the Trinity Processor formed their cornerstone. However, Ontos triggered a space-time transition event and disappeared forever. I was left with the other two, Logos and Numa, entrusting them with managing the Blades. Malos and Pyra. Those are the names that you now know them under. So... I am... Numa. Managing. The core crystals at the heart of each blade are tasked with relaying all kinds of information to Logos and Numa about the selection pressures of the outside world and the biological status of their bonded human, but also the experiences and emotions they share. As the data continually accrues, 
New evolutionary code is sent back to the core crystals. And this code is used to create new, further evolved blades. These blades too become titans in time. And create new generations of life forms. This was the new circle of life I had created. A grand scheme. It boggles the mind, Dad. So, we're all born from this endless cycle of life to replace the victims of the previous world. That's right. But there were also a handful of survivors. I believe you saw them when you were in Moritha. The unfortunate ones who clung to life. Ah. You mean those monsters? Were they originally people? Core crystals were first conceived as a replacement for human brain cells. A product of mankind's age-old quest for immortality. And that's what became of them. How awful. But that technology became the starting point for the creation of blades and titans. So, in one sense, their sacrifice was not in vain. Though not all may see it as such. So tell us, in the end, did we develop as you had hoped? What do you think? I couldn't possibly. Well, those phantasms which you all experienced earlier, those are feelings that lurk in all of your hearts. As well as that man, Amalthusus. When a person loses something, they cannot help but seek a reason why. Within themselves, or in others. They seek a concrete answer to the question of who they really are deep inside. Such a very lonely existence. But perhaps that is what it is to be human. All this data passed through me, and I knew. Huh. All of you. You were not in any way different from us before. Huh. That's why I did not intervene. 500 years ago, when the man finally arrived here, I did nothing when he took away Logos and Numa. I stood and watched as Logos, instantiated into blade form, set out to purge the world. You don't make sense. Didn't you go to all that trouble to rebuild it? Then why would you... It is fate. Fate? It is fated to happen. It cannot but happen. My atonement was doomed from the start. That can't be. I had made my peace with it. Once more, I longed for nothing more than to disappear. However, something has now changed. And that is you, Rex. You and Numa. Me? And Pyra and Mithra? You reforged your bond in a way I had not thought possible. And the life you share. Moreover, the conduit which fell into a stubborn silence after the world's end 
has begun stirring once more. Rex. The power you and Numa exercise is the conduit's power. It comes leaking out of some far-flung dimension. And it is a power we can know nothing about. But with its help, the world may be about to change. What's all this shaking? It is Logos. Malos. Trying to destroy this world and everything in it. What? Remember, at heart, he is but an information processing unit. Neither good nor evil. He is driven by a certain impulse. The despair that the man named Amalthus felt. I see. So it was right. What I felt back then, I mean. Rex. Rex. What is it you desire? What else? To stop Malos. And if you succeed? I'll punch him in his stupid face, and then... probably get a drink with him or something. That's the sixth rule of the Salvager's Code. First have a punch out, then drink to forget. Once you've forgotten, the friendship's all set. I'm... not old enough to drink yet, though. I see. Numa. No, I should call you Pyra and Mithra. What is it? I want to apologize for having burdened you with all this. Don't worry. We're actually grateful. Thanks to you, Father, we got to meet Rex and everyone else. Those are cherished memories. Father. I have transferred all of Elysium's data and authorizations to you. Make me proud. We will. Rex. Yes. I will disappear soon. When I do, the conduit will likely disappear from this world. You will not be able to use your power forever. I understand. We'll make do somehow. I'm counting on you. Close. changed your mind about this world? Right now, I think I am glad I met you. Got it. Then, our answers match. Thank you for giving us all life. Mitra, where's Malos? If he is here, I know where he must have gone. Where is it? Tell us. The greatest of all artifices. The artifice that exists solely to destroy the world. Ion. Ion? So that's what Malos meant.
Then, that's where we'll go. And, well, we know what our next destination is. Uh, I hesitate to even say, hey, everyone. Uh, welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. I'm sorry, I'm after this last time, yada, yada, yada. Because, I mean, we're ending the part off right now. Because we're already 20 minutes in. And, uh, we have a lot of stuff. And, yeah. Um, Klaus. He's basically the only remnant from Xenoblade 1. I'll disappear soon. When I do, the Khan will likely disappear from this world. I really like Klaus. It's just such a tragic story with him, but uh, that is neither here nor there because, well, I think next time we're actually ending the game. Um, I'm going to go same party okay, that I did perfect. last time. And, yeah, um, if this next area is what I think it is, let me actually check. We'll, we'll end the part off once we actually get down to... I, I remember what the mini-map area looks like for it. Yes! Okay, so, uh, yeah. Hey, the storage area entrance, and next time, we're beating Malos. Until then, see you guys later.